What up, nerds, and welcome to another toothy episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 380, recorded Sunday, July 17th, 2022. Tonight, we're talking about the winner of the July poll pick, which was Lake Placid from 1999. Before we get to the review, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., we got our boy Randu. What's up? What's up, buddy? How's it going? It's going very well. I'm excited to talk about Crocs with you. Well, I mean, that we don't have much choice because God knows. I cannot understand how we wound up doing two <laughs> late 90s creature features back to back, both reptile heavy both yeah. questionable in quality both five star films hands down oh god, no oh god this bit is not continuing is it <laughs> jesus christ i cannot do another week no this is not america's movie uh okay. next up last but not least calling in from south korea we got our boy soju what's up man oh what up it's your boy gator bait stains gator bait <laughs> I it's too perfect too too easy gator bay. Gator bay. i feel like if you <laughs> don't gator. oh wow if you're not in florida like that is you a joke know. that's lost on you <laughs> just but it's very <laughs> relevant yeah <laughs> yes to uh, our deeply lives. deeply uh, relevant fans of the U- Go gator <laughs> Fans of the University of Florida typically chant Gator Bait at football games and shit like that. My cu- my cousin had a dog named it Gator Bait. That was the name oh, of his dog. Wow, Lord. that's just that's like the tempt fate in that household. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the dice, baby. Oh, shit. Florida problems. Uh, let's, <laughs> we got a they lot. are ample. <laughs> we got so many. It's insane. Um... <laughs> The Gators aren't even really one of them, to be honest with you. Uh, let's we, we got some housekeeping. Let's jump into some housekeeping real quick. Uh, here's another reminder. We do have our August poll pick currently posted on our Patreon website. The theme for August is back to school, back to school to prove to my dad that I'm not a fool. There you go. The Thanks movies. for the consistency, Bob. Yeah, yeah. That's it's consistent. What, that's what I'm known for. How consistent I am. Wow. Actually, there is some truth to that, but man, not <laughs> enough. Some, some. <laughs> uh, the three movies to vote between are Raw, Cherry Falls, and The Faculty. Bob, how are those numbers looking? Pretty consistent, if I may say so. Uh, the faculty's on top. Oh, Raw wow. Is, yeah. Quite Raw. ironic. Raw's in the middle. Cherry Falls, nobody gives much of a shit about. So, <laughs> there you go. I, yeah, could tell which, I could tell which movie was leading based on your cadence when you spoke their names. You <laughs> screamed Raw. Raw. You breezed Raw. right past Cherry Falls. And then you gave gave the faculty a little nod. Like, yeah, the faculty. Raw. I uh, Cherry Falls, man, it's definitely not going to win, but I highly recommend people check it out. Nonetheless, I think that I root for the underdog. Here we go, Cherry Falls. It's time to rally. It's a, uh, it's a man, P- weird movie. Our yeah. patrons are really <laughs> pushing this '90s prerogative these days. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm all right with it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Juice is out of his element. He's. I know this, this is. At my generation. This is way... Yeah. Justin was in World War II, as we all <laughs> these, know. So. These movies are chug <laughs> as far as Juice is concerned. I know. Uh, fucking, actually, fucking, they're coming back in style. Just the chug. Weezing the chug. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is incomprehensible. <laughs> Weezing little juke. Well, that's Ooh. pretty on par for us, then. Yeah. Pretty we'll, much. Ke- we'll keep it around. Just <laughs> chuggy old fucks. Uh, get your votes in <laughs> before the end of August, before the end of July, and we'll see what movie we're talking about in August. Um, 
Speaking of Patreon, we're going to be dropping a brand new mini cast this Friday. If you support us at the $10 level or above, you get access to a whole back catalog of Patreon exclusive episodes. We've got over 70 on Ooh. there now. Whoa. And uh, this Friday, we're dropping a brand new mini cast. Uh, your boy Soju is talking about season three of the Netflix anthology Love, Death, and Robots. Robots. Yes, sir. <laughs> That one's a (laughs) that one ended up being a long episode because there's about nine um, shorts, and I talk I try to talk about them all with you know a solid amount of length and depth to them. So um, length, I know. Try to you know (laughs) always try to give the length and the depth. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) but anyways, yeah, I've always talked about. I don't think either one of you have watched one of the seasons but i always watch them as soon as they come out i really enjoyed that anthology series and um, <laughs> it was fun to talk about this, <laughs> this one was a, a, <laughs> fucking tried it, <laughs> some of us have jobs justin <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> but yeah so um i this season was really solid too i think it had a lot of good short there was about nine of them and they're all pretty consistent in quality you know give or take one or two but um it was good it was a good season tight yeah so check that out this friday dropping on our patreon website also if you do sign up uh, you'll get an rss link emailed to you and you can drop that in your podcatcher of choice and listen to all of our bonus episodes on itunes or wherever you prefer to listen to your podcast um so check that out also man we're dropping not one not two but three podcasts this week um oh my lord over on let's get what? physical media what is this noise can you hear yeah. that it's it's storming oh, like yeah. a mother and it's oh, oh yeah. really yeah okay. i was like what we're about to go fuck? dark in a second <laughs> i really be- hope not but it's it's going off outside yeah. damn okay oh, shit. all right so yeah sorry right, if that's well. bleeding over into the audio that's just rain and thunder <laughs> Um, All right, so we're dropping three episodes. Three episodes. This week, huh? <laughs> yeah, let's get physical media is dropping on Tuesday of this week, which is going to drop before this episode drops. So it is now available to you. Episode number thirty-five. Mikey and I we talk about our June pickups. So if you have any interest in collecting Blu-rays, four Ks, DVDs, um, anything, anything like that, check out Let's Get Physical Media everywhere you get your podcasts. We talk about a lot of horror stuff, but it's not exclusive to horror. We talk about really all genres. Um, so yeah, check that out. Three episodes, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. You get fresh, straight, chilling audio for your ear holes this week. Nice. Yeah. By the end of this year, we should be pushing 80 uh, mini episodes, maybe more than that. Yeah. We always drop bonus ones in Halloween. Um, so October goes, yeah, Yeah. man. So get close to 90. That's crazy. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's a bunch of bonus episodes out there for you. There is so there's a pile of straight chilling audio just waiting for your ear holes. Slam it. Boys world pile. We we've been doing this for what? Eight years now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh my lord! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're getting close to yeah. a decade of straight chilling, boys. Think yeah, about that that's for one second. Horrifying. <laughs> We're gonna do it. It's gonna happen. We're Nothing more horror centric than that. I will drag us into that decade if I have to. <laughs> cool. Okay. I guess. Even, even you're so I, heroic. <laughs> even if I have to piece together clips of Randy once he drops out, just to put episodes together. <laughs> He's still here. Oh damn yeah. It. It's still <laughs> the three of us. I, I'm so glad that you've you've decided that I'm the first to die. <laughs> Every Very week, I just helpful. gotta cut up a bunch of ra- random Randy quotes. I love what about anal. those clowns in Congress? What a bunch of clowns! <laughs> I love anal. Uh, <laughs> Good point, Randy. <laughs> as sharp as he ever was, Randy on the commentary. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's all I got for the housekeeping. Did I, uh, you guys got anything? I forget anything. My house is clean. Mm. Just robots. Yeah, just I think the, we're good. Row on the butts. The house is clean. Randy. <laughs> clip. Play the clip, Randy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. It's playing. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to make sure you knew, dog. You know, sometimes, sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we don't know. Um, all right. We're getting into the main event. We're talking about Lake Placid and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? 
<laughs> Bob, how many of this box do you have? <laughs> I just have the one, the blue ray. Okay. Just the blue box. I have to change my question to, <laughs> to fit your lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> to fit my lifestyle. It's very alternative. How it's, many? Living in a blockbuster is weird. <laughs> uh, I, I got Chug on him. I went Chug. Dude, you got enough movies to make your own blockbuster. That's for sure. I mean, like a very small blockbuster with one cop. Mm, a yeah. very everything. A very weird, horny blockbuster. That's not true. <laughs> you have a cop. <laughs> You have at least three copies of Godzilla, so that, well, that is true. That's ninety-eight, <laughs> the one that came Alien out. simply evil. Evil. We're talking Lake Placid tonight from nineteen ninety-nine with a runtime of an hour and twenty-two minutes. Ooh, gotta love that. Gotta love. That yeah, time I time. did love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is nice to see a film that does not last eight hours. That's I know. really yeah. good. Really appreciate it. This was directed by Steve Miner. Stars uh, Bridget Fonda, Bill Pullman, Oliver Platt, Brendan Gleeson, Betty White, a whole bunch of other folks. Plot synopsis brought to us by the back of this box right here is as follows. An investigative team armed with state-of-the-art equipment, high-powered weaponry, and a biting sense of sarcasm must work together to defeat Black Lake's most ferocious resident, a 30-foot prehistoric crocodile. Written by David E. Kelly, directed by Steve Miner, and co-starring Betty White as the cantankerous Miss Bickerman, this terrifying tale of survival combines humor and thrills with remarkable deafness. And that's from the New York Post, so you know it's true. General Mangs, had you seen this before and would you recommend people check it out? Randy, kick us off. Uh, yeah, so this is a, a movie that I did not ever see, and um, people in our generation find that pretty surprising, I think. This is the first time? kind of hotness for people. First time This is watching? the first time viewing for me, wow. yeah. Okay. First time watch for me, and over the years, like, honestly, it was, it was kind of like, it was on my radar. I just wasn't that interested, to be perfectly honest. When I was growing up, it seemed kind of silly and stupid, and we had a glut of these kind of movies in the wake of all the Jurassic Parkness of everything, as we saw last week. So I was just, like, kind of not into it. Um. I had heard over the years people give glowing reviews of this, not, not reviews necessarily, but people talking about this movie with great admiration. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I've been kind of like pre presupposing too much. Maybe I've been a little bit, you know, judgmental towards it. So maybe this will be good. And about 10 minutes into that, into the movie, I felt that uh, I was uh, very vindicated in my original analysis. Um, I don't particularly recommend this movie. Um, yeah, let's just leave it there. I don't really recommend this movie. <laughs> All right, Juice. It's a stupid movie. <laughs> Juice, what about you? So surprisingly, I thought I had seen this movie and I was wrong. Wow. So we have two first time watches wow. this week. Me and wow. Randy. I had not seen this before and I was surprised. I For some reason, I just thought I had seen it in my youth, but I didn't. Um, and kind of agree with that assessment this was more of a lake flaccid in oh my god opinion. oh <laughs> the fruit is so oh my low. god it's i so feel low. like i feel like your opinion was formed by that pun and not the other <laughs> way around no no <laughs> okay i have right. my own thoughts uh, <laughs> uh, most of them are flaccid <laughs> so no i i was at, i found this movie kind of obnoxious honestly oh, okay. and i was surprised too because like randy said I have always kind of heard positive things around it. Positive in a kind of fun sense, you know, yeah. not like this movie's amazing. Nobody ever but said it. Yeah. Nobody's ever told me this movie changed their life. And I was quite disappointed in what I got. So no, I would not recommend people check this out either. Bob, how do you feel about Lake Plaza? Hey, if you were, if you're a 10 year well, old in 1999, I recommend this movie to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, honestly, yeah. So I did, I saw this in theaters when it came out as a, you know, 10 year old in the nineties. Um, and I, I liked it then I like it now. Um, may, I'm, I'm sure some of that is nostalgia coming into play here. Um, but I think this is like a, a real easy breezy, like popcorn movie to throw on during the summertime. It's got like some light summertime feels. It's got some like real wild characters that say dumb shit. Um, 
all the practical stuff I think is dope. I mean, it's uh, I do recommend it, but I wonder now hearing you guys talk about it, like how much of my nostalgia is coming into play here. It might be more than I. They have. call me the crocodile man. More than I. Whoa, just, that yeah. is too Bob. <laughs> yes, the bumps you make are so loud. <laughs> It's, uh, well, I just really want everybody to hear him, I guess. We're not <laughs> using Bob's bumps anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, so, yeah, I'd seen this a handful of times, um, and I, I recommend it. I, I think it's a very fun, light popcorn movie that I recommend. So. Okay, well, let me prove Let's, you wrong in the next hour. That this is, is <laughs> absolutely shaping up to be a repeat of last week. Yeah. Except, yeah Rob's, com- Rob's commitment to the bit is going to come in time. All right, boys, we're going to do it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> There's the bandana. Put on the American the bandana, bandana again. Is back on. Um, are you calling a cootie queen, you lint liquor? We go. This movie is for queen. patriots exclusively. Uh, and uh, we're going <laughs> to explain all that uh, in the minutes to come. Like Brendan Gleeson, true patriot. Yeah. True patriot. Um, yeah, that is not much of a recommendation from the straight chilling crew there. That's two, thir- two thirds of us. Two thumbs down. One thumb firmly planted up my own ass, apparently. Uh, so we'll drop that. Well, we'll drop I'm that. so glad you can acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. We'll drop that spoiler <laughs> warning and get into the rest of the movie. Here we go. Spoiler warning. Gentlemen, it's unclear to me how all the volume got fucked up on my. We're killing it this week. Killing it. Um, Yeah. I hope this is a very concise plot synopsis because uh, this movie is a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, it's a it's a should be about three sentences long. It's a breezy (laughs) plot. This is it. Yeah, let's do it. Shorter end. All right, this is the plot of Lake Placid. The movie opens up in Aristook County, Maine, with a scuba diving game warden being bitten in half by an unknown creature. The next day, Sheriff Hank Keo, game warden Jack Wells, paleontologist Kelly Scott, and a crocodile enthusiast by the name of Hector Sire go to the lake to investigate the incident. They find a human toe a severed moose head, and Hank's deputy also has his head bitten off by a creature in the lake. The following day, Hank and Hector are arguing by the lake while a brown bear approaches them only to be attacked by a 30-foot crocodile and dragged into the lake. Jack, Hank, and Kelly then see an elderly woman living by the lake uh, feeding a cow to the crocodile. She reveals she's been feeding it for several years. The crocodile followed her husband home one day and eventually ate him two years prior. Uh, Jack and Hank plan to allow... Florida Fish and Game to kill the creature. Uh, Hector suggests luring the crocodile out of the water by dangling a cow from his helicopter. The plan works, and the crocodile leaps out of the water, causing Hector to eventually crash his helicopter into the lake. The crocodile comes on land, attacks the group. Kelly is knocked into the lake and swims over to the helicopter. Uh, the crocodile chases her and gets stuck in the helicopter itself. Jack shoots it with a tranquilizer. Hector then surfaces in the water and is attacked by a secret surprise giant crocodile. There is two of them. Uh, Hank blows it up with his grenade launcher. Florida Fish and Game arrive and load the paralyzed crocodile onto a truck uh, and carry it off to be studied. One week later, we see the old lady feeding several baby crocodiles in the lake. And um, that's about it. Roll credits. Oh, man. So... Yeah, yeah, I found this movie, even this. D- despite the fact that there's a lot of great kind of actors in here. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. cast is pretty stacked. And yeah. yet this movie was a whole lot of nothing except obnoxious, obnoxious, like uh, jokes, I guess. Characters. <laughs> Every, like, yeah. Here's my characters, I literally yeah. wrote this note that says. Every character in this entire movie is very unlikable. And that is the mildest critique of all the characters. Some of these characters are outright fucking like obnoxious and irritating to even like see on screen. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, thought, I don't I mean, like any. Bridget, <laughs> Bridget Fauna's character is likable. Oh my God. I, I mean, no. I, are you enough? serious? Likeable enough, I guess. She's written to no. be like the most harpy, horrifying, She's like, the like worst misogynist. One 
take on a woman I've ever seen in my life. Bill Pullman yeah. was okay, I thought. I Bill know. Pullman I, was the closest thing to being okay, and he's white bread in this film. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he is he's, nothing. He's the guy that I guess we're supposed to like identify with, and be like as they're trying to figure it out. All we spend way is, more time is, with Brendan Gleeson <laughs> is an absolute fucking creeper. Like, uh, yes, he's terrible. Brendan Gleeson is like kind of. A I've always bag. been a creeper. Betty White is yeah. a fucking spitfire, which I'm totally down with to be honest Betty White's great I wrote like I wrote notes on this it's never a good sign when I do that one of the notes I wrote was um what where 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 is it uh full scene with Betty White a fun a fun scenes with Betty White but still every character acts like some dudes giving each other shit at a fantasy <laughs> <laughs> that's the case yeah. of this whole fucking movie yeah it is yeah and also too yeah betty white's nice but the whole kind of appeal of betty white is the fact that she's an old woman that says suck my cock yeah, i mean, I mean right. she's not exactly. nice i would not describe her as nice well but. okay i mean i meant like a sp- nice in this film God, okay, like i mean you. not enjoyable you know, yeah yeah a, she is a fun to watch somewhat entertaining yes. moment in this film i thought Oliver although her Platt like was also entertaining <laughs> in that way like he's a shit oh bag God, no. but the things that he no. said i would laugh at okay no no. Oliver just Platt, annoying okay. man <laughs> but such big wonderful boobs i'm like oh my god <laughs> what 12 year old wrote this fucking movie yeah it's and just, also well, and she's like ah thanks <laughs> like what oh, you're no. an officer of the Dave, law david e. you're Kelly of, wrote the this movie. Law. of the law he's rich randy he's rich uh, okay like, uh, i cannot figure out what they were going for with him except for like kind of kind of doofus with a wise Kate, like a wise understanding of the creatures or like they were going for me ian malcolm and they came out with like just a dog shit character i wouldn't well, describe also, him as ian malcolm at all i don't think that's what they're going for i think he's like an extreme version of ian malcolm like he's like he's ian malcolm as written in the book jurassic park that, I yeah I think that's kind of fair i would say though any kind of tension that comes from this film though just comes from him being a dumbass and since he's not a particularly likable character and since he's constantly just putting himself in stupid situations i kind of want him to get eaten <laughs> like I, don't, I was hoping, i'm not yeah. feeling suspenseful I mean, die i want you to die i'm fine <laughs> with anybody getting their heads bitten off in this movie that's like kind of the the joy of this movie is like it's so light and breezy that like it's i don't know i'm down for like i'm here for the the goofy ass fucking lines that these people are, are dropping and i'm here for the gator yeah. effects going off and it's just like I don't know. Go Gator. I didn't find in, <laughs> any of that like annoying. It's dumb, but I, it's written to be so. Like, Literally. I No, 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 no. I think that it's written to be pithy and funny and it comes off as fucking horrible. <laughs> like it's to me, it's like these aren't funny jokes. That's true. the problem. They that are. True. They are like and it's not funny in the way of like, oh, man, what a groaner. Ha ha. It's not even like Sharknado funny. It's like. I don't know, man. It, to me, it really sh- hits this really big thud with every fucking mm. line. And that's the thing is like no line in this movie exists except to be the setup for a dumb joke or the payoff for a dumb joke. That's it. Like there's very little else, a couple of scenes of exposition and that's mm. it. And none of that is compelling to me. They force the shit out of a romance between Pullman and Bridget Fonda. Oh. And I can't like nothing about this movie has any heart or any sort of like feeling to it, except for when, uh, Betty White helpfully tells people to suck her cock. So <laughs> if she had also one. too, like Brendan Gleeson, he's a good actor. He's a great yes. actor. Yeah. He's a great actor. Yeah. This opening scene where a man gets bitten in half and he drags <laughs> a bitten in half man into his boat. Zero reaction. There's no, he's looking around like, what? it's like, not what, there's no like real suspense in this film. I was blown away. That this movie about a giant alligator really comes down to like he's a slightly bigger than normal alligator and pretty much it comes down to the last 10 minutes of where anything that this alligator kind of does matter and everyone's being so fucking stupid all the time they're always just hanging out by the water always yeah. they're always standing Literally, by the water they, <laughs> nobody gotta be white lives there the if they just weren't yeah, but why? Like, if they just weren't there, no deaths. 
they saw a yeah. bear get ta- a bear yeah. get taken Hell out of the yeah. water and they're all just like Dude. talking walking around the water <laughs> no problem like yep. no worse caution. than that, <laughs> I, don't, than that. I don't need Bridget this Bond movie to make sense necessarily like i don't care that i know because you saw it when you were 10 <laughs> yeah i mean but i can still enjoy it as it is like it it, it can just I be a, a, like a series of goofy sequences that aren't sensical and still enjoy it like it doesn't have okay, that's to true type. but it's that's- not fair at what that's it's doing. <laughs> that's fair yeah that's the thing okay so for me that's fair it's a creature feature especially from the 90s and i was expecting it to be more goofy with mm-hmm. cra- you know and anaconda you yeah. know crazy yeah. characters stupid, and stuff like that crazy this movie oh my it's it's a whole lot of nothing it's really trying to land these jokes that i agree with randy just feel so hollow and awkward and everyone's a huge shitbag like this woman i can't understand what her at where Dude. her attitude is coming from she shows up in this talk. town and just calls everybody everybody a bunch of inbred pieces of shit and we're yep. supposed to like her why She's do you from like new her york. bob i mean Dude, that's, that's just what the thing people in new york the, are like Dude, you know? yeah this Nailed it. this is the thing fucking <laughs> Okay, here's here's I want to talk about her so much because she is so unlikable and it's like written in such a way that it makes me th- it feels like Dennis Leary or some shit wrote this oh. where it's like some tirade about <laughs> about uh, uptight women and whatever. It's like it's all like if somebody's not being a shit bag to somebody, not saying a line that's like a pe- like being a dirt bag to somebody else, then it's like it, they are just being stereotypically of of something, either a stereotype of a woman or a stereotype of New Yorker or a stereotype of a small town sheriff or a stereotype of a rich idiot. Like these, they just mm-hmm. lean so hard on these fucking archetypes that, it, and that's that's it. There's not a whole lot else. But I want to talk about her yeah. motivation because they spend explicit time talking about okay well you're a fucking paleontologist and they she gets flipped out of a fucking canoe by a giant gator <laughs> or a giant crocodile whatever and afterwards she's on the phone with her boss she's like i'm a paleontologist i don't need this sort of shit and like complaining about being there and then immediately immediately afterwards has a conversation with bill pullman where he's like why are you here again and she's like I, I have every right to be here i need to be here and then she, it's like yeah, no but really why are you here and she's like <sighs> I just can't go home. You just got thrown out of a fucking canoe by a goddamn crocodile. This is your answer to having a fucking affair with your boss that went sour. Terrible decision. There's no motivation that makes any fucking sense for her. She's just there. She's just there. She doesn't have to to make complaints about being there. Yeah. She's a strong woman. Also, I agree with Randy that the, the I, different. that the idea that there's supposed to be some kind of romance here is horrible. And even in the final scenes where the movie is finished and they're going to drive away, I like can't stand this fucking character. Oh, you're yeah. just going to move your sleeping bag out of the way. It's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this character so, so much. She's I can't, be- be I can't I believe that so. Rob started off saying, oh, well, she's pretty good. Kid. It's like, oh, she's uh, why fine. would she's you like a- say that? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. What is likable about her to you? <laughs> I mean, I, nothing really. So I we guess can tear you guys like, completely <laughs> like, break her down. I guess she didn't stand out in my mind as being a piece of shit. Uh, the the person that like really stood out to me was Oliver Platt. Like he's a huge fucking yeah. problem in this movie. Sure, yeah. But like I can still laugh at him because he's he's an idiot. Like at the end of the day, he's just a rich bumbling buffoon, and it doesn't like bother me that he is that way. It's it's fine. Um, I don't know. I guess like my recollection of Bridget Fonda's character was just not as strong as y'all's. Um, because I was probably just like fixated on how pe- how big of a piece of shit Oliver Platt was. To be honest, I mean um, he's. He's made. He's there to be a piece of shit, but literally everyone, everyone, everyone in this movie is a piece of shit to somebody at on multiple occasions. Even yeah. Bill Pullman. Even but Bill Pullman and fucking Brendan Gleeson. They have this interaction with some young woman as they're standing there meeting with the what Bridget Fonda's character, and they just straight up ogle her ass. <laughs> and it's like, okay, 
So this is supposed to like set Brid- Brid- Bridget Fonda apart as like the career woman who can take care of herself and who's going to like, you know, stake her claim or whatever. And she does so by th- saying a line. I don't, this is a paraphrase. If you look at me that way, I'll sue you. And with today's laws, I would win. And I was like, holy shit. Hell yeah. Did a fucking ni- late 90s comedian shock jock just write this? Is this from a Howard Stern script? <laughs> like, what is this shit? It's, yeah, like, I agree. 100%. I had to look and see if the Weinsteins were involved with this movie. They weren't. How uh, <laughs> how do you guys feel about the alligator sequences when we actually do see it? They barely exist. I that was another shocker. I was like, how how is this all I'm getting? When I okay, when I saw the 82 minute runtime, I had a huge smile on my face. I was like, okay, yeah. this is gonna be this is just gonna be packed full of ridiculous, gory, crazy alligator chomping shit up scene. And you had the opening scene, which I was like, okay, they're kind of setting it up. I didn't really feel a whole lot of tension, but the guy got bit in half, and I was like, okay, that's okay, that's okay. And then nothing until a bear gets ripped out of the water and then nothing until the last 10 minutes. Dude, I <laughs> totally I think that when you have a gator scene, even, I will give it this. When you have a gator scene, the effects, this even the CG effects for its time mm-hmm. look pretty good. I was pretty impressed with, with what you got yeah. out of that. And the puppet effect looks fucking great. I know it's yeah. a Stan Winston thing and it shows. So that all is great. The thing is we get way too little of it. For a movie this short to feel padded out is unreal to me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it felt padded. I, like I, oh, I do man. agree. Like I would prefer to have some more crocodile sequences. Here's a little bit of trivia, just just to uh, drop it in here. There's just under four minutes of actual crocodile in this movie, so yeah. there's not a lot. Yeah, um, I felt that. I was like, yeah. by the end of the movie, like when they're setting up this whole plan, I was like, are you shitting me? I was like, this is the end of the film. I was blown away, and that even. I thought it would be more than four minutes, but I was completely feeling it. I was like, not nobody has done anything. <laughs> Nothing has mm-hmm. happened. At nobody all. in. And the thing is, like, it would be different if the characters were likable. You don't see Jaws that much, but you like those characters. You That's enjoy true, watching yeah. them, and you like you like Roy Schneider's situation is like is like really tumultuous. He's got a family at home. You see him loving with his family, and like uh, all this shit we don't get in this movie. It, even with the small amount of shark you get in Jaws, it is actually lauded for that fact. I cannot give this movie that I mean, same. Jaws is I one of the. Can't best movies ever crafted but, so, like, and this know, movie is at least dude. in part modeled a- after that formula yeah at least in part uh, yeah sure. so big mistake on that part there's yeah there's nobody uh, even betty white's character at times is kind of obnoxious like the, the situation oh, yeah. the situation of you know oh your husband why would she admit to her husband being dead, her killing him with a oh, frying pan him. and burying him in the yard. When just 10 minutes later, she's like, yeah, the alligator. Ate a gator him. Guy. It just right. feels so if her concerned, like this movie is just people riding themselves in circles. It's she's absolutely that trying to protect the alligator or well, the crocodile. If she's doing that, then why is she setting herself up to go to fucking prison? I don't know, man. She's a crazy old lady. She's probably lonely. The only sure. friend in the yeah. world yeah, she has no. is the crocodile. So she's going to try and protect. So her naturally she wants to get herself put into jail uh, where she can't help. The crocodile, she could say man. my husband, my husband's on a fishing trip. I mean, I guess, yeah. Anything, uh, <laughs> honestly, any lie is better than that's, "I killed him." Please arrest me, coppers. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's. <laughs> I find that scene like silly and funny, though. Like, I'm happy it's in the movie. It's way more funny than like, oh, he's just on a fishing trip. I'm happy it's in there because she's enjoyable to watch. But that is it. Like story wise and character wise mm-hmm. and anything else, nothing about that is good to me like the, the idea that she's like secretly also praising this fucking pra- praising Sobek and like sees these creatures as the dominant species or whatever it is she's fucking doing like that whole line of thinking is absolutely straight out of Jurassic Park thinking and like it's like an out so poorly and it's so unearned why does she feel this way just because it's a big crocodile and she started feeding I don't know man nothing about that except as a funny a vehicle for Betty White to deliver some lines. And you know what? Yeah. For that, that's fine. That is fine. And if a whole movie was as successfully funny as that scene, 
we wouldn't have this conversation as as it is right now. And Rob's kind of making me feel bad about like, and I understand this idea of what this is just a fun creature feature from the nineties. You guys are taking it kind of too seriously. And the thing is, is I understand that way of thinking and I want to subscribe to that. If they had delivered on any aspect of this film, the the horror aspects barely exist for advertising mm-hmm. a movie that is a creature feature four minutes of an alligator that's slightly bigger than normal let me remind you that's the story we have here also too the comedy i don't think it's funny I don't think it's silly funny. I think it's obnoxious trying to be funny. So in that aspect, I I don't. So uh, all I'm left with is just picking apart why somebody would write a script this shitty. And I would... (laughs) And I wouldn't do that if they could deliver the horror or the comedy or preferably both, which they can't. So now I'm just left with questions of why is this so, so shit? Yeah, we're the left length. with nothing to do but to pick it apart. Go ahead. Bob, I, I want to I talk about the length of the average crocodile, which I had to Google this, is apparently 14 to 17 feet. This one is allegedly 30 feet. So it's you know, roughly right. double the size okay, to a double. of your yeah. average crocodile. But so the way they talk big. about it, yeah. the way they talk about it, they're like uh, he said, what's the, the largest, he's like the w- largest one ever recorded in India is 27 feet. This yeah. one's 30. Yeah. And the largest one ever caught was like, what, 21 or something? He yeah, mentions it. Like that, some, yeah. Something like 23. And so they exaggerate that it is bigger, but also to just... Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's I, I, not this, enough for me to care. This to <laughs> me is on like roughly the same level as Anaconda. I think Anaconda has obviously like way more snake than this does have crocodile. And it's got more like scares. It's just it probably had a way deeper budget too, but it, it exists more story? More story. Yeah, <laughs> I don't it, know. it exists in the same space for me though. It's sure. just like kind of dumb. Oh, yeah. It's not particularly yeah, well written. They've met. The characters aren't great. Yeah, they have they have met. Um but it's like okay with me anyways in this movie. Like I feel like we're all kind of on the same page for Anaconda, but we all saw that as kids, right? I think. Did we? Is that true? Yes, we did. And so maybe that has something to do with it for yeah. sure. Like, I feel like that's definitely the case that seeing, seeing these movies as a kid has an impact on your viewing later. Yeah. I will say that like for Anaconda though, like looking back at it, there's a lot more like cool set pieces and yeah. Yeah, I agree like, with that. Yeah. interesting kills. Like this movie doesn't really deliver that either. Instead, we just get a lot of Brennan Gleason and Oliver Platt getting on each other's faces and trying to outquip yeah. each other. And I just... My my threshold for that ended immediately. Fucking Brendan Gleeson in particular. Luis, this movie starts with him making a comment about like everyone's a comedian, everyone's so sarcastic, and then every single fucking character in this movie just continues to do that, including Brendan Gleeson. True, and I'm just like, please stop. Not everybody has to be the quippy one liner guy. This feels like a modern Marvel movie. <laughs> Also, I was just looking. So Anaconda episode 277, I I only gave that one a 1.5. And in my mind right now, I'm saying that Anaconda was more entertaining than this film. At least, like Randy said, at least there was interesting set pieces. They're going down a river. There's some kind of story. There's a good villain. John Boyd was fun to watch. Yeah, Yeah. he's a ridiculous villain. Do you Um, have that pulled up? I'm curious at what Randy and I rated it. If you Yeah, I do. So Randy gave it a 2.5. Rob, you gave it a 3. Still I think fat. I even copped in the episode to it being largely nostalgic goggle. Mm, yeah, so, yeah, and and I would say comparing these movies since they're so similar, came out of very similar time, very similar motivations, it's, occupies the same space. There is a villain in that movie who has a ton of character, you know, and there is a lot more snake. There is an interesting set piece and setting of the boat and going down the river and a motivation. Okay. Compared to this movie where it's three bumbling idiots poking around a lake with four minutes of a kind of big crocodile and one person dies. One person dies. What? No, there's more than that. Is there's, there? The, oh, there's, the, the yeah, guy in the beginning. 
and a There's deputy at least gets, two on camera gets his head bitten off as well Okay. Yeah. There's, there's at least two. And then we get the bear sequence and the cow sequence. The bear. And then it, it attacks the helicopter. But I don't think anybody dies in that last scene that I recall. Actually. No, I don't think so. No, don't think Except so. the gator himself gets blown to yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> second surprise, second gator. They had does. to make good on that, that Chekhov's gun with Which something. Is so they just wrote in a second gator. <laughs> Anaconda again. When did Anaconda come out? 1997. So this came out two years later. And the surprise second gator is the exact same twist of anaconda <laughs> spoilers whoa you can tell a freshie from a salty by its long narrow snout hell yeah you can. <laughs> thank you hell yeah a thank you crocodile from man. a salty <laughs> <laughs> man r.i.p yeah pour yeah. one out for a boy steve yeah yeah man mm-hmm. <sighs> I was, so yeah i mean i don't know like go ahead bum i was say i was watching some steve Irwin videos like trying really? to get, trying to get bumps for this and what and whatnot and like i hadn't seen any steve Irwin shit since I don't know, 10, 10 years ago, at least that dude was a, like a maniac. Like he was afraid of nothing. It, it's, a, yeah. it's really incredible. It's very impressive to watch him work, to be honest. Like I, my it's, ass would be yeah. scared of everything. I don't know. Yeah. It's he nuts. Was not a Ray got that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be something. You know? Just yeah. no, no problem whatsoever. And his family's the same way. His like two mm-hmm. kids, his wife's still trucking along. And, um, yeah. the, the two kids are like, just like him. Damn. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah. So I, I wanted to talk, uh, ask this question because it seems like in my mind, this movie should not take place in Maine. I understand that it's like, oh, it's surprising that it's in Maine and creates a, a little bit of conflict there, or whatever. Yeah. But the problem with me is the way that Maine is portrayed, especially because it's outsider perspective is from the rude New York character. Boy, you can really tell you're from New York. And then it's like they they set like use all these they use all this it's set in Maine they treat it like it's like deep woods Al- Appalachia yeah. or some shit Gates where they're like oh, you gotta go fuck your sister and shit yeah. like this I'm like that's not even like is that a, maybe yeah, is naive, that a stereotype of Maine that's the most the most northern so. state outside of Alaska I don't well, know that it has that stigma attached but maybe I'm wrong it could be you know we're not from the north so maybe in that region it is but I have never heard that like i've ne- i it's, yeah. i agree with randy it's a bear if they had gone okay they'd gone down to florida then that mm-hmm. makes sense the backwoods of florida oh you're fucking your cousin conference. whatever okay at least those are stereotypes that day. people have heard of or are familiar <laughs> oh florida man i mean every those are day. things that have existed for a long time i hope not um <laughs> but thank you for being a friend Bob, Jesus, regulate those. They sound, sound. fine on my end. I, I'm sorry. Really? They sound really up. loud to yeah. me. <laughs> Weird. I don't know. Um, but anyways, yeah, I agree with Randy that that seems very strange. I don't know. That's a minor Rain. quibble for sure. I just like, yeah. it just kept throwing me because I'm like, is this a place that you would go to even as a New Yorker and be like, you bunch of inbred hicks down here. Do you even have no. a phone? I, don't, I doubt <laughs> like, it. I what? think it, I think it's kind of interesting that this crocodile apparently swam across the Atlantic. It came from another continent, and like the idea of that happening is cool. And apparently, it came with its partner, and they're just like procreating. I don't know. Like it's cool mm-hmm. to think about like a crocodile that fucking big that it could swim across an entire ocean. But see, when you're talking about that, though, that there was like they kept giving kind of conflicting ideas. And that comes in with the idea of Betty White, because then when she's at the end feeding the little ones and she kind of goes in this thing of like, oh, I've been feeding. I may take care of her for what, like six years. Then Mm -hmm. I was like, there's this little bit of implication that she has something to do with why it's gotten so big. Like kind of one of those things of where like, you know, it it has no natural predators there nobody lives on this lake and because she's just feeding it like full-grown cows you know maybe it's been able to reach its full potential you know the goldfish in the bowl type of thing it only grows as big as you can get it and so i was like well then they throw in this idea of it could have crossed the ocean and it's always been this big and i was like how i mean how would it never have been spotted i don't know it was just i don't know she's uh, the only one that lives on the the lake maybe not it's not visited regularly 
maybe henchmen in the world they cross at the ocean nobody's ever seen a giant fucking crocodile i mean i don't know it's, it's, it's <laughs> i don't know I, i'm, I'm dubious <laughs> I'm dubious of this dumb movie science, but I don't want to like, there's bigger problems than that. Unfortunately with this movie, Um, I want to talk about like the obnoxious characters some more because there's some (laughs) really painful jokes in this movie, things that pass as jokes. Let me lay one out here for you and ask you what its purpose was. Oh, Randy. Um, Right after meeting Oliver Platt, we have Brendan Gleeson, Oliver Platt, the the main four out on canoes about to be flipped the fuck out. Um, uh-huh. literally flipped out of the canoe um, and just fucking Oliver Platt and Brendan Gleeson are just going at each other, blah, blah, blah. And they're just like, Oh, like how, how does somebody come to believe that there's a crocodile in Maine? And guys like, and then eventually he's like, Hey, uh, uh sheriff, I, I don't know how to tell you this. Uh, sometimes it makes more sense if you're if somebody outside your family tells you, cause it just doesn't really, at home. Yeah. but you're fat. And then that's it. That's fucking it. <laughs> yeah. I agree. The joke. With- and Question I was mark? like, I was like, where one? Yeah. So these attitudes, I agree. They seem to come from absolutely nowhere. Yeah. And it was the same kind of confusion I had with a woman where she just shows up and immediately upon meeting these people calls them inbred hicks that sleep with their cousins. And then, yeah. So this guy saying like, uh, sheriff, this man I just met who they have no problems with each other. You're a fat piece of shit. It's like, so is this guy. I don't understand why that is being said. What is the motivation? Why does he feel it's that to way make toward him this guy? Less likable. But the thing is, you don't like if you're going to make a character un- an un- unlikable bastard, as they're clearly trying to do with uh, Oliver Platt's character and succeed at. Um, but they are hitting that button so fucking hard that they're just like making non sequiturs. This whole movie is just like mean non sequiturs constantly and he is the chief among them that one is like just stood out me he's like why did he even say this just to make us dislike him more is the only answer otherwise it's like beyond petty it's just nothing it's like nobody at, like just just freely does that shit that doesn't make any fucking sense to me and it really bothered me like if you're going to be portray this character as a shitbag let him be a shitbag within the confines of the context they're in that line could have existed in any fucking movie and it would have made just as little sense as it did here yeah and rob rob talking about that woman's character being you know fine or likable one of her lines never been to maine before huh oh i have good hygiene i'm not yeah. welcome what Why? <laughs> what i don't know what <laughs> I guess people in Maine don't bathe. Probably, <sighs> probably. That's why does she hate <laughs> probably, them so yes, probably. much? <laughs> probably. I, I don't know. I I don't. I don't know, man. I didn't like analyze this shit quite as deeply. All of this is dumb. <laughs> this is not analyst. I, 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 so, I Mark, what did you do with your time while you were watching this movie? Then <laughs> I understand, like. That's the thing of Rob making me feel bad God, about damn. analyzing this shitty movie, though. It's like nothing is happening, Bob. What are you doing while you're watching this movie? There's no gator. What are you doing? I'm just having a light <laughs> chuckle, eating some pea corn, you know, <laughs> chilling, waiting Mark, for, you like, waiting queen, for you Betty live White, live waiting for Betty White they, to tell someone to suck her dick. Watch, she, watch yeah, wait, gator I'm waiting for the line. If they hey. just build it to the max with this gator, then that's fine. Make it, you know. Sharknado had the decency to show a shit possible. ton of sharks. And like, Nados. Four, four and minutes Nados. of gator. Four minutes. That's terrible. Yeah, I, that's the thing. Is like, like what else? I, I, I have to agree. Like, it's like, I don't know. I'm not. I don't want to analyze these people that badly. I would love to take them as frivolous nonsense, but it's tough when that's all you're given for an like 45 minute period. Like basically I, I like, and they're just wandering the same stretch of woods, putting themselves in harm's way intentionally and knowingly for no good reason. Like it's just, it's really hard to root for these idiots, especially when they're such unrepentant assholes to each other and everyone. <laughs> I mean, the sheriff does eat a bunch of Twinkies at the beginning of the movie. Like, I don't oh, know. Yeah, he's a fat piece of shit. Maybe. Fuck him. Maybe he he's lay he's off the pounding Twinkies. those Twinkies. He's going hard as fuck. You know, it, worked, it worked for Al and Die Hard, but not him, I guess. Well, um, I, th- I, I mean, I, I think know, it, works for, it works for Al. Al Dude, there's, this, there's a scene where like, like fucking Oliver Platt 
directly endangers the female officer's life yeah. for nothing more than a fanciful dip in the water with the fucking giant crocodile. And then he gets back and he's all like pissed off and some like Brennan Gleason's like, don't ever fucking do that again. I'll fuck you, whatever. And and he like pouts off and Bridget Fonda says, like, you hurt his feelings. And I sat there and like, fuck you. Fuck both <laughs> of you. What is this shit? What are you talking about? Hurt his feelings. He almost got people killed five seconds ago. <laughs> Also, too, I think one of the big red flags for me initially was when they open with this woman and, you know, her boyfriend who she works with or whatever had an affair with her best friend. And then that whole dialogue, I was like, dude, it was like cartoon question marks popping up all over my brain. I was like, what? Wait, what? Where the, the friend is just like the heart wants what the heart wants. And I was like, why are we, what is this to die? Like, what, <laughs> is this what I'm about to get? And yes, yes, it was. That's what I was about to get. I was just so confused about the emotions that were supposed to be taking place in this scene or why this dialogue was so terrible, why we were spending time with it. It's just from the beginning, it was even so bad. <laughs> You could have done so much more with him being like with, with Oliver Platt being obsessed with like Sobek and like ancient whatever. You could have yeah. done more with that. And that was f- largely un- unfulfilled for me. He got to look in the Croc's eyes one time and largely like at the end of the movie, he's still the guy that's like, we can't kill it. That's it. He has no arc. He just kind of is and causes problems. And, and you know, like there's there could be movies with characters like that that are successful, but it's just like one more fucking ornament on the shit tree here. Like <laughs> I agree. That was actually the most compelling thing to me. And it sucks that they made the guy who knows anything about crocodiles, the one you want to die the most, but can't <laughs> die because he also needs to give the information. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the idea, I mean, this was, there was an Egyptian goddess that had the head of you know, a crocodile and, and even his little spiel about, I thought it was actually one of the best, kind of moments in the film of him talking about people being thrown to the crocodiles to be judged. Oh, let the crocodiles decide and him having kind of like this little breakdown of like, Oh, the crocodile wanted to eat me. Does that mean like I'm not worthy or whatever? And I was like, if you're going to introduce a character like this, that's got all the gadgets, that's got all the know-how, why make them a complete piece of shit and why yeah give them no kind of arc at least maybe he could have been a piece of shit in the beginning and Mm -hmm. he had that judging kind of moment where the crocodile found him not worthy and then maybe he you know turn over a new leaf or something but that's they don't give it any kind of weight or meaning and they don't mm. have to. I know Bob's saying, oh, this is just a, a fun creature feature. Why does it got to be so serious? But I'm just like, come because on. Give we're me looking something. For ways. Give me yeah, something. we're looking for something Better. to cling to. <laughs> this is not a perfect movie, and I'm not arguing that at all. Um, I understand we got to talk about something, right? Like The movie has holes. It's got issues. I understand that. Um, yeah. I just, well, it's just still a five star movie. That's all. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it's not. just, it's a five star movie. Um, <laughs> That's it. That's it. I, I want to point out one other thing that, like, Becky was watching this with me and they were saying to me, like, what's with this score? And I hadn't noticed, but, like, the score in this movie is fucking the most generic shit I've ever heard in my life. It has no hook, no anything. To, it's like, it's like notice. Pirates of the Caribbean, except they're making it up as they go. Like, <laughs> And then they end the movie with a reggae song for unknowable reasons. <laughs> That's what they're wrong. I love me some reggae, but what? Yeah, it's a big, it's a uh, big hit up in fucking Maine, and New England loves their reggae. Bob Marley is this love? I mean, it's a jam. Who doesn't like it? Is that what they ended the yeah, movie with? Is, is this love? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh, Why? Uh, so is tainted love, but none of that shit means anything with this movie. <laughs> and it's just feeling. like. I mean, I don't know, man. It, this movie should have been set in Jamaica, honestly. Oh Just my God. Couldn't have hurt. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, do you guys have anything else to mention before we write this? I feel like we kind of touched on everything and there's yeah, not much. It's a pretty slim movie. Yeah. It's super slim. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds like an um yeah. I have one more <laughs> plot hole that I'll talk about it in my thing. Okay. Briefly. Uh well let's go ahead and rate this. Out of five, 
Juice, kick us off. How do you feel about Lake Placid? I feel like it's a big nothing, to be honest. Oh, I was God, no, no. At least they had the decency to make it short, um, and I was happy. I was like, yeah, 82 minutes. All right. They really know how to just deliver what we want. And then I was so disappointed <laughs> that that 82 minutes was largely just blank nothingness. I was just truly, I was blown away by the time the last scene was coming up. And I was just like, what have we done this whole movie? Nothing. Walk around this lake. Literally walk around this lake. Um, the handful of positives is... Betty White tells people to suck her cock. Okay, that's Thank fine. You for being a Bull, <laughs> Bull Pullman. No, uh, Bill Paul Pullman. Pullman. <laughs> Bill Pullman is a fine, plain character that's not obnoxious. Thank God. Um, it's a, and then Hector Kelly and Sheriff Hank are just the biggest pieces of shit to each other constantly for no seeming reason. The gator barely exists. There's hardly any gore. There's no suspense. And this movie is a big, nothing. It's a big fucking nothing. Um, I'll give it one star. <laughs> All right. One star from Juice. Yeah. Uh, Bob, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Out of five, Lake Placid. Oh, boy. Um, I think the cast is great. Um, I mean, we've explicitly talked about that. Um, Even though the characters that they are portraying are not, like, super well fleshed out or developed, I still find them entertaining enough for, like, an 80-minute uh creature feature popcorn type movie to to uh you know keep me entertained throughout the 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 runtime of the film um i think the effects look good even though you don't get a whole lot of crocodile what you do get holds up well i think um stan winston did a lot practical even the digital stuff does still look pretty good uh you know specifically when the bear sequence and um, the cow sequence and that the, the helicopter scene at the end too, where it like latches on a helicopter and pulls it into the water. I think all that looks pretty good. Um, Betty White is definitely a standout for me anyways. She's salty as hell, but it's just obviously funny seeing this like older woman who's very well known um, say shitty things to people. <laughs> um there's like no fluff really in this movie. I mean, I guess you could also argue that it is entirely fluff. Um, so, so I don't, I don't know. It, it, my point being it's brief and like they do take mercy upon you in that. Um, and now you can put them in a cool Godzilla cup holder. Yeah, you can. I think it's got some like fun summertime vibes going for it set at the lake. Um, and I think it's like a fun nineties creature feature like what i enjoy as much if i hadn't seen it as a kid probably not there's there's absolutely no subtext here there's nothing to read into really there's not a ton going on but i also don't need there to be a ton going on i'm not like detracted by that necessarily um it's it's not like my favorite movie ever but i still dig it um i'm gonna i'll give it a three out of five randy how do you feel about like Placid? That's how I feel. Um, yeah, so this movie's terrible. Uh, I'm looking back because I wanted to see on top of giving 2.5 to Anaconda, the movie that I have a proclivity to like because I liked it as a child. Um, I gave a 1.5 to Deep Blue Sea, which I had also never seen until adulthood. And now I feel like I am required to give a lower score to this movie because that movie is much has much more likable characters, even though they aren't that likable. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my biggest problem with this is we spend so much time with these characters. We learn to hate them almost instantly. All of them, all of them, even Pullman, who we, like is the most blank slate of them all is just a little bit of a shitbird all the time. He is the voice of reason when he has to be, but only when the plot is tired of people arguing for a second and they need to move to the next beat. 
and the love interest thing does not work does not work it's got a bad score that everything is just like it's just so padded with one-liners and non sequiturs it's just fucking painfully obnoxious to justin's point like i don't think this movie is nothingness in in terms of plot i think it's not nothingness it's just obnoxiousness 100 percent of the time and you know what the worst thing about it is None of these motherfuckers get eaten. Not one of these fucking assholes get eaten. Just yeah, the that fucking they make you hate. <laughs> Yes, they make you hate them and then they get to survive like they're the like fucking triumphant heroes at the end of the day. <laughs> I I wanted so badly for Oliver Platt to get eaten and this like it's so set up for him to look into the gator's eye and be like, "Oh no, I fucked up." And then get eaten by a fucking sobek creature. Like that's so set up for him and they just don't. Like there's so many opportunities like that, that they could have taken and they just didn't. Brendan Gleeson didn't get eaten fucking. Of course that like the two leads, the two the love interests have the plot armor, but that love interest thing should not have happened anyway. This one's a fucking paleontologist. She shouldn't be there. Even she knows that everybody fucking knows that. And nobody can t- get her to go away. She's not a fucking law enforcement entity. They can just send her home. <laughs> like, also, did they home. even explain why a museum in New York would get a call about a giant gator eating a person? No! Who they called did the not. museum? <laughs> <laughs> like, I understand, okay, they want to have them look at a and say, ah, oh, it's not a dinosaur, I see the tooth. Ship the tooth! <laughs> like, you don't have to send somebody there. I know that they made a dog shit excuse for that, but they just kept making more and more like excuses that were built on nothing and nothing and nothing for her to be there. And she's terrible to watch in this movie. So I wanted her gone instantly. Um, so yeah, that was all terrible. Um, let me see the good, um, the CGI and the practical effects hold up really well, especially the practicals, but the CGI surprisingly. So I give them that for sure. I w- I really liked seeing that second croc show up, even though it was a little cheap. I loved seeing the, like the oh fuck, Oliver Platt's about to get eaten. Oh fuck, they blew his ass up. Okay, Chekhov's gun fulfilled. Everyone goes home. That's something I can eat, eat popcorn to. Cool. Um, also, Betty White, thank you for being a friend. She did a great job giving me some sort of fun levity in this. If they had spent any more time with her, she would have become just as obnoxious as the rest of the characters, though. That's my opinion. And I honestly think that they could have just just give a few more Roy Schneiders in this mix. They don't need to have every fucking character be the pithy one-liner guy. And there's so many movies that seem to think that they need to do that. Whereas Godzilla 98 was, or 99 rather was like fucking either a cartoon character with nothing funny to say, or a nothing, no, no, no brain static brain character. This movie has just characters that you are, that are designed for you to hate them. All of them. That's how I feel about it. It's a one star movie for me. All righty then. <laughs> With Randy's one star, that's going to put our aggregate at a 1.7. Let's jump into a Rotten Tomato segment and see what the critics and users think about Lake Placid. Certified. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, why is it a 1.7? Oh, did I calculate incorrectly? It should be just a two, right? I gave it a one. Randy gave it a one. You gave it a three. Five divided by three. What? That's a 1.7. Okay. This was fun. Um, okay. My bad. <laughs> this, is, this is the Rotten Tomatoes segment in which I'm going to have these gentlemen guess within the best of their abilities with their high level math skills. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what the critics and user aggregate scores are on, for Lake Placid on RottenTomatoes.com. We start as we usually do with the critics. There are 96 critic reviews on this, so not nothing, you know, a little sampling. Um, why don't we start with Bob? Where do you think that the critics land on this movie? What percentage do you think gave this a positive review? I don't anticipate it super high. Um, I'll go uh, probably sub 50. I'll take a 45. Oof. 45. Okay. Juice, how about you? Sorry for questioning your math skills, Bob. <laughs> hey, it's fine. Sometimes I can fat finger some shit. It's, it's, it's yeah. all good. 69, seemed, dude! I, seemed, I guess maybe it seemed lower than I anticipated. Right? Um, it should be so much higher. Well, um, that is not 45. Ah, that's a good. I'll take it lower. I'll take it to 40. 
40. All right. In the same region, though. And it's a good region to be in. Bob, you're going to take this one. It's a 47% mm. right in that zone. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yes. <laughs> Let me get that hell ski. Go Gator. Go Gator. Go Gator. Go Gator. Skate. Gator. Skate. Gator. No Gators. No, we don't want that. Gators. I mean, it gets a pretty penny. You know what I mean? Around here, that means big money. I don't know what you mean. But you know what I mean? No. No. You ever ever go to those roadside stands that sell Gator cum? (laughs) 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 They sell P dash nuts and Gator cum. That's an aphrodisiac down in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. (laughs) In the swamp, we just guzzle the Gator cum. God damn. Mix it in with them. Freshy from a salty by its long, narrow (laughs) snout. Mix it in with them ball peanuts. University of Florida. <laughs> they call me the crocodile man. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> ball peanuts. Moving on. Give me some Moving of them on. ball peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Man. Oh, man. <laughs> Lake Placid on RottenTomatoes.com. Here we go. Audience score. There's over 100,000 reviews from the audience on this one. Quite a sampling. Damn. Why don't we start with Bob this time around? Oh, wait, did we start with Bob? Yeah, let's yeah, start with Juice yeah. this time around. What do you think that those users thought of Lake Placid? I think it's going to be slightly higher because I like you, Randy. I just heard like so much good shit about this. I was so disappointed. Um, so, but I, it's got to be capped to a certain point. So I'll give it a 55. All right, 55. Bob, how about you? Ah, that's a good bet, man. Um, Man, I'll 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 one dollar up from that with a fifty six. Fifty six. All right. Well, a bad instinct and bad region of the scoreboard here, guys. Oh. It's a thirty seven percent positive for the users. Lower than the critics for this movie wow. is okay. bad news, and that's right it, around our average. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not a so we are movie, men of the people this out. week. At least me I and think Randy. it's. I think honestly, our our perception, Justin, I would have guessed the same as you, but like my my perception is skewed. I think by the fact that we just grew up when this movie was yeah. like geared towards our well, age group, and so did. I think a lot of the people were around. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I forgot you were listening to Ragtime and shit <laughs> in the '70s or whatever. Um, um, Ragtime in the '70s. <laughs> He was old even then. Um, let's go to that critics consensus. Betty White's <laughs> Betty start the critics consensus starts with Betty that. White. <laughs> Betty not, White's delightful supporting disco. turn me. No, fuck this. Go. Justin's at least got that kind of taste. No, I'm kidding. This goes all right. Um, Betty White's delightful supporting turn may be worth the price of admission alone, but Lake Placid's swamped by a smarmy script and inability to deliver on the creature feature mayhem. Sure. Yeah. I, I think that's 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 a, an an that's a an abridged version of my complaints. There is one thing I forgot to mention, and it was that I just got a hell yeet. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, oh hell yeet. <laughs> I'm so glad that we got to squeeze that in. We got Ooh. that out of the way. Thank God. Whew. Mm-hmm. Randu, mm-hmm. do you have a, a negative review you wanna I sure do. I'm gonna start with one that is a critic's review because well, just listen to this. The whole movie's a giant croc. Wow. wow. Holy shit. Too easy. Good oh. shit there. Yep. That's from the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> <laughs> New, New York Post on the back of the box right here. They got it right. You got to read the New York I'm actually, oh, yeah. I was pretty blown away after I watched this. I was like, this is what won the poll pick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. there's all know. one. I'll just read one more negative review. This is a user that wrote, "Why watch this Bill Pullman crap when alligator exists?" I was like, oh, alligator. I mean, I don't disagree. Not that great. I never. I seen haven't seen alligator. alligator, but honestly, like I, I was thinking about the, the 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 movie that I thought of was Crawl, which we did review as well. I oh yeah, Crawl's fun. Did we and cover Crawl? Maybe we didn't. We because I never saw that. I think I did a mini cast on it. Mini cast. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then Rob and I must have talked about it. But I, I thought that was a fun crocodile movie or alligator movie, and this one wasn't. So mm. yeah, yeah. 
that's it for the Rotten Tomatoes. We could go. There's a lot, quite a lot of negative reviews in here, so I don't have time to sift through all that shit. All right. Well, thank you, Randu. Uh, that means it's time for trivia. It's totally time for trivia. All right. I've got a few. There wasn't a whole lot of trivia on this. Uh, so this was directed by Steve Miner, whom we have discussed before on the show. Um, he's directed a lot of pretty well-known horror movies. Um, he produced the original Friday the 13th. He directed Friday the 13th Part 2 and Part 3. He directed House. Mm-hmm. He directed Warlock. He directed Halloween H2O. He also directed the Day of the Dead remake. Um, and he's done a lot of TV work as well. Uh, he directed a lot of episodes of The Wonder Years and also Dawson's Creek and Smallville. So this dude's all, all over the map. Dawson's Creek. Yeah, your boy Dawson. <laughs> My boy. <laughs> your boy. <laughs> uh, no. This had a, a budget of $35 million and apparently clocked in at about $57 million at the box office. Uh, which, Go Gator. Which apparently was enough for them to make five low-budget made-for-TV sequels. Oh, yes. God. They had Lake Placid 2, Lake Placid 3. They had Lake Placid The Final Chapter, Lake Placid vs. Anaconda. Just kidding. And, yeah, right. And Lake Placid Legacy. I that last seen. one was in 2018, I believe. Wow. I just realized this is the same I director who did, who did H2O oh, sorry, just the year yes. before. Oh, God. I just said that. Yeah. I, brother. Yeah. My, I know. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Minor, I know that you did, but I was just look, like, wow, that's yeah, uh, that's yeah. that's not great. I have it's such a great. soft spot for a house, for Friday the 13th, 2 and 3. Same. Well, but yeah. after that, the minor train ends for me, I think. I, know, I thought you liked house. I thought you were a house guy. I like how zoo. I'm not so big on house. House okay. is terrible. I just don't really like it that much. You okay. know, it's just not high. I know you're list. a wonder years guy. I know that. Yes. But also like showrunners have more to do with that than <laughs> individual directors. Yeah. Uh, the, the guy who created the crocodile for the film was of course, Stan Winston. We talked about that. Um, he also created uh, the creatures in aliens and also worked on Jurassic park. Um, we kind of touched on this too. The largest crocodile in captivity was named Lolong, who measured uh, a little <laughs> over six meters, which was like 20 feet, a little over 20 feet anyways. Uh, when he died from pneumonia in February 2013 in the Philippines, um, the crocodile uh, depicted in this movie was about 10 feet longer than that. So it was, in comparison, a pretty damn big crocodile. Um, oh, she's a fancy flapjack. The, oh damn! I just realized that this is the same guy that worked on Aliens and Jurassic Park. Here we go. No wonder this it looks is, so. Good. This is the game we're playing now. <laughs> wow. We have a new game. We, we have a new game. Oh fuck me! Um, the uh, this is last. If I had I a dick, this is where I'd tell you to suck it. <laughs> this is where I tell you to suck it. Thank you, Betty White. Uh, the crocodile was mechanized uh, through hydraulics which uh, has been learned on the previous uh, projects, worked fairly well in, in a water environment, I guess. Uh, yada, yada, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. That's fine. That's enough. That's nonsense. <laughs> Hydraulics made the thing move. Um, yeah, that's all I got for trivia. Let's talk Cooter of the Week. Straight chilling. Cooter of the Week. Juice, what is a cooter and why do we hunt them? Oh, cooter's character type and a stray chilling exclusive. Oh. <laughs> cooter must hit three of these five points to be considered a cooter. We want the cooter with the most points. The five points of cooterdom are sexual deviance, manipulation, smug arrogance, overall looking attire, and overall pathetic patheticness boys i think we have at least one cooter for sure and we might have more than one so call me the crocodile man can i go ahead and nominate hector please yes sure Oliver Platt's character. Um, He's built as with the character for sure. Smug the cooter arrogance. Character. Let's start with smug arrogance. Check. He mm-hmm. just strolls into town and just starts calling people fat for no reason. <laughs> Huge piece of shit. Uh, and that they can't read and that <laughs> they are oh, inbred. And he almost gets 
<laughs> you know, he tells a fem- female officer that she has great big boobs and how interesting that is and that he wants to mate with her <laughs> and then eventually tries to get her killed in a fucking helicopter. So is that so. sexual deviance, Randy? Oh, yes. Yeah. She, got, she got great big yabos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for the sexual deviance is what I'm confirming. to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She sure does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bob, uh, cont- light, contain yourself. Light manipulation, I guess. Like, he, he kind no. of... I was going to say, like, he does, like, force that woman to get on his fucking dumb helicopter and go out into the bay when she, like, she doesn't want to. I don't know. I thought she was going to get eaten. I was like, surely they're going for to sure. have somebody die. Yeah. And then that would be, like, his come to Jesus moment. Yeah. But it, it turned out that he was just had his feelings hurt by them being mad about that, I guess. They're very mean. Um, and then they have, speaking of manipulation, he then gets a little talking to with Bridget Fonda in his tent where he's like, these things are, it's like looking in the dragon. They have more dignity. And she's like, you can cut the shit. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And so, yeah, yeah it's fucking manipulation yeah. at the end of the day. And it's pathetic. Yeah. Um, also too, I'm pretty sure we never see that character again. So why didn't they just have her get eaten? I don't that, think I mean, she never no showed up idea. again. Yeah, that's a good question. Budget? Yeah, I don't I, know. <laughs> I, I, she probably got scared off. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, just have her get eaten. She whatever. got scared off. I, I, don't, I don't know. She just, just ran, ran off into the woods. His attire is like normal shit, I guess. I don't know. He's wearing like a uh, vest. Is it? It's like outdoorsy. I, yeah. Like fish it's kind of tough. In this, in this context, you could kind of wear anything that... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is, I don't know. It, it wear a, we could wear a lot in this context. Four outside out of five, of like though. Formal e- wear. E- easy four out of five yeah. points. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Okay. I think he's a top contender for sure. I think he's intended to be the cooter of this movie. I, yeah, like, I, I if, think so. Yeah. If there was an intention to make somebody that hateable, it's him. Yeah. Okay. So we got him. Uh, does anybody else want to nominate anything else? I haven't done the math on this yet, but I think we should talk about Bridget Fonda. Okay, let's talk about her. Let's talk about her. Um, comes strolls into town, like smug arrogance through the roof, written Check. that way to Check. be the piece of shit, mean New Yorker who comes to town and just starts telling everybody to fuck their sisters and shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, fucking Cousins arrogant piece ranking. of shit. And um, let's see, manipulation. She's fucking like for some reason that we I still don't understand manipulating her way into sticking around. Um, in this expedition to capture or kill a giant crocodile that has at best at certain points ripped a man clean in half and ripped a man's ha- head clean off um, and is still arguing to be there and trying to man- lie her way into it. I think that's pretty manipulative and I don't think it makes any fucking sense either. Um, what else we got? Um, looking at tire, she's fine with that. I'm like nothing, nothing crazy there. Patheticness, kind of fucking pathetic. Like there's the way that they write this character to be like in this cat house fight with her co- colleague over who gets to fuck their boss is pretty fucking disgusting in my opinion. Yeah. And, it, but within the world where that's the case, I think she has um, some sexual deviancy. Uh, I, I, she's painted that way anyway, which is fucked up. And then uh, pretty pathetic that that's the way that that's handled is by just like cowing to the Weinstein. I don't know. Maybe that's more modern lens at play, but it feels like, I don't know, man. It just it just really is trying to paint this one in a negative light, and I cannot figure out why they wanted to do that. I don't know. So <laughs> I got nothing. So she, she a cooter? I think she hits at least three, right? Yeah. I thought it was three. So. Sexual think, deviance, manip- yeah. manipulation, patheticness, and smug arrogance. Smug arrogance, yeah, yeah. No looking to tire, though. It's the same ratio as fucking Platt mm. or Oliver Platt, except not yeah. as pronounced, not as loud about it, maybe. And then possibly even the uh, sheriff. Uh, oh Gleason's yeah, character Gleason. Gleason, who just by the way, I want to. I love Brendan Gleason. He's a really good actor. That man fucked up his accent this whole movie. <laughs> He's the most Irish man in Maine for sure. And that's with Oliver Platt for some reason slipping in some Irishisms. It seemed like sometimes. 
sometimes it seems like his accent was off base and i don't I, know why because he's a fucking american man i could be I wrong think. here but like i just or didn't Canadian, even think maybe. gleason was trying to hide his accent if he was trying to hide it he fucking oh failed. i mean if you hear him speak normally it's definitely tempered so i think he is trying well <laughs> wow <laughs> wow <laughs> I'm a little, yeah. I just I'm a don't little bit know. less inclined to put him in the cooter camp because I think he's largely just the put upon character. Yeah, I don't know. He's the Schlemiel who gets yeah. Oliver Platt lays for com- comedic effect. I mean, I don't know. His looking attire is fine. He's kind of arrogant, but not really. He's really just more like, man, what the fuck? I got to do this shit. Yeah, oh, fuck. He's kind of just giving it back to people who just constantly give him shit. They kind of paint him as somewhat pathetic. He's just kind of like pathetic, taking shit from yeah. all sides. Um, he always gets caught in the traps. Yeah, he is like largely not manipulative. He tries to shoot straight with people, but then occasionally he'll like lie a little bit. But like like when he gets cut down, he's like, you promised you wouldn't hurt me. He's like, I lied. And that's like, <laughs> no, nah, I don't qualify that. That seems yeah. justified for one. Um, yeah, sexual deviancy, I would say like ogling that young girl. Uh, was edging pretty close to sexual deviancy for my mind. Um, you're an officer of the law, bitch. Get your ass, in get your ass together here. No, I'm, no room I'm for a that law bullshit. Bish. Oh, damn. <laughs> I think he qualifies, but I think he's That's on a, a, on a lower class. To get. <laughs> yeah. I think I think Oliver Platt's definitely like King Cooter of this movie. Yeah, I think I it's think so. Yeah, let's book him, boys. Yeah. That's welcome. That's where I'm at. We got him. We got him locked up. Hector, you're the cooter of the week. Boys, we can relax now. We can take it easy. We can let our hair down. We're going to talk about what we've been watching this week. Hey, gang. What What you been been watching? watching? I don't have to critique films anymore. I know. We can just (laughs) chill the fuck out. Randu, what have you been (laughs) watching? Um, Not a whole ton. I did finish Portal 2. Um, it's great. I don't, that's, I know I talked about it, but I don't think you I did. You last t- time we spoke. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's great. It's definitely a little bit, um, better than the first in terms of story, just cause it blows out the story quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has a lot of fucking great comedic moments and stuff. And it's just like a fun mechanic. I could play another three games like that for sure. Yeah. I know that it's hard to justify storyline wise and God knows it's probably not going to happen because it's valve, but um, I liked it a lot. It's definitely, I, it lived up to all my expectations pretty much. Um, I watched a um, doc- documentary called Girl in the Picture, which I believe Justin, maybe Rob also watched. Oh my Lord. Yeah. I started it. I haven't finished it yet. Oh God. Okay. It's pretty, f- a pretty fucking hard pill to swallow that one. Um, yeah. Maybe a little bit more than even most of the Netflix documentaries that we get these days. Um at least for me. Um, I also, to cleanse that out of my mind, I watched My Cousin Vinny for the hundredth time, and that movie is fucking great. Yeah, Hell great yeah. Fucking, that is a silly movie that is successfully funny. What a, <laughs> what a change of pace. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, love it. The Utes, all that shit. Good the stuff. Um, I purchased, because it was on sale for six bucks, Friday the 13th, The Game. Which unfortunately I found out afterwards is not cross platform, oh, so I can't play with anybody. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Oh, and yeah. there's no like campaign mode or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm stuck with this on Switch and I played it a little bit. And it's fun. I I'm pretty I know I would be really bad at it anyway. So it's really more of a novelty. For six bucks, I was fine with that. Yeah. Um it's I also got inside for two dollars, but I haven't started it yet. Mm. Um and that then I also got Fall Guys, which I've been wanting to play, and is quite fun. And I took <laughs> first place on my first outing on that. There you go. So I don't know what that fun. is. Yeah. It's I like a com- it, it's positioned as like, oh, it's a game show. You play these little like blueby little guys, and you're just trying to be the last first one to make it to the end, or mm. you go through different like games, okay. and you try and make it to the end of like fifty people or whatever okay. um, competing. Um, yeah, they're not. And then last but not not least fucking i've just been a lot of games i guess this week this this past week or two and they put pokemon puzzle league on the n64 uh uh online for nintendo switch which i had never played but i know it was a direct sequel almost to uh tetris attacks which i played a lot as a kid and so it's it's more or less a a variation on a tetris or bubble bobble type of game mm-hmm. a clear the board kind of game and it's very addictive and fun if you can withstand all the fucking Funimation 
anime voices of uh, Pokemon characters the whole time, repeating the same sentences. Yeah, that gets tiring, but it's a fun game. Um, good way to turn your brain off. Damn, That's just about it. Of this makes me want to play Pokemon Stadium. Yeah, maybe it'll come up soon. It's, they've been churning out the Pokemon 64 games on there. Good. Yep. That's it for me. Nothing too crazy. All right. Juice, what you been watching? Dude, I've been watching a ton of shit. Um, well, we skipped last week too. So I've got some stuff uh, hanging around. But um, yeah, I also watched uh, The Girl in the Picture. Man, that is one of the saddest documentaries I've seen on Netflix as far as our true crime stuff goes. Shit is sad, sad. Each twist kept blowing my mind man i just oh man that was really fucked up um so yeah i watched that i watch master uh going through new films of this year this one came out around march i think march or april and it was solid i liked it pretty good i did a mini cast on it that'll eventually come out but um it's got some witch uh, lore it's kind of based in the mainish new england area it's some like really nice old university or whatever it's got some witch lore to it so a lot of witch movies coming out this year which is interesting but um i like that one it was pretty solid i would definitely recommend for a new movie for 2020 deuce um I finished Umbrella Academy. That was a solid season. I um, Oh, last night, I watched um, Crimes of the Future. You guys have both oh, mentioned yeah. that you watched it. Yeah. And I don't think I've watched a whole lot of Cronenberg's work. Y'all have talked about a couple different things. Bob, you're talking about a crazy movie with the cars or whatever. Crash. Crash. But... Um, Man, what a wild movie. (laughs) Since I just watched it last night, I haven't had a whole lot of time to think about it. But there were times where I was super intrigued and really impressed. And then there were times where I was laughing out loud at things I was not particularly supposed to be laughing at. (laughs) Laughing out loud. (laughs) Yeah, several times. And um, so mixed bag there, quite a bit. But very wild um well made film i guess um man i think it knows how funny it can be yeah yeah i think so it was man what a wild ride but i i dug it i like i, I thought it was really enjoyed interesting. watching <laughs> it yeah i i need to think about it now all day today after i you know kind of slept on it but <laughs> man Absence yeah. to free is the way to be. That was a wild movie. Um, I feel like I've been watching a whole bunch of other things too, but I can't remember. So that's enough for now. Bob, what have you been watching? I have finally started watching The Boys. The uh, Boys oh, are I, back. I watched yeah. the first episode of that myself this week. I forgot it. Put Dude, it on my list. I feel like everybody I know has been telling me to watch The Boys for the past two years. <laughs> yeah. I just have yeah. it for, for no particular reason Same. at all. Um, but uh, Alice and I started watching it a couple weeks ago, and we were in the third season now. Oh, uh, shit. oh wow, you burned through that shit! Wow, damn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's yeah, there's like eight episodes per season, um, mm. and we're in the middle of the the third one currently, and it's oh. extremely good. Um, mm. It is if you're unfamiliar with it, um, it's about superheroes as if they actually existed in the world. And there is this, uh, mega corporation, um, that sort of, uh, uh, controls them, I guess, for lack of a better term. And, uh, um, yeah, Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Bezos is the boss. Um, Amazon. and, uh, there's a group of just regular ass folks that, uh, have been, um, crossed by these superheroes in negative ways. And they're trying to, uh, handle it as best they can uh take them down a peg or two um and they call themselves the boys so it's based on a comic book i guess which i have not read um but it is this so this is on amazon it's an amazon original speaking of bezos um it is extremely fucking graphic like they pull yeah. no no fucking punches um it's wild it's kind it's of cr- a downer too right it's like super it's like, negative. Yeah, it's kind of it's in the realm of Watchmen, 
Yeah, I agree. Yes and no at the same time. It's it's like a black comedy, I would say. Like yeah. it is yeah. funny, but like you don't feel good when you're yeah. watching it. <laughs> um it's i've been really enjoying it though uh god the gore level is like at 11 so i mean you know if you're a horror fan you're a gore hound whatever there's definitely something here for you um i dig it i really i've been enjoying quite quite a bit actually uh speaking of superhero shit i saw the new thor movie love and thunder um i have not seen the previous thor films this was my first one I don't oh, really? really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't really care for it. Um, it is sort of the polar opposite of what I just described as being the boys. It's uh, it's a full-blown, like, almost slapstick comedy Marvel movie. Taika Waititi directed it. Um, and it just feels like it's got these boxes that it's it knows it has to check, and it's just kind of going through the motions. And it it rang a little hollow to me. It just didn't really. Maybe that's huh. because I haven't seen the previous movies. That, to be yeah. fair, could mm. very well be the case. I don't know. I don't think all so, of man. the previous movies are so different from each other. It's like they're like entirely different fucking properties. Yeah. Wow. It's okay. like it's like if you haven't seen. It's like watching a random Friday the Thirteenth movie. <laughs> like yeah. Okay. I like I, this. This to isn't me, a, anyway. This isn't a spoiler. This is sort of like a tangent I had. Like this movie is obviously not made specifically for children, but like millions of children are going to go see it. And there's this one scene in the movie where they say the word mm. orgy like five or six times. <laughs> and I was just thinking like, what, what if I brought my nephew, my 10 year old nephew to see this, which I would have done. Like I wouldn't have thought twice about yeah. it. And he's like, you know, I've always been a creeper. Like, do I have to explain what an orgy is to my nephew? It just felt weird. I was like, why this? Dis- it's like a sleepover. Oh, isn't there a scene where he's naked? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't see his, you don't see Thor's dick, but yeah, he's naked and everybody's like super jazzed about it in the movie. They're like, fuck yeah, Thor dick. Like they're yeah. like, way into they it. Have, yeah, they've they been doing that a while. To suck it. And that's the thing that they're in this weird spot where, yeah, a ton of kids go see it, but also a bajillion adults go see it. Yeah. So yeah. it felt weird. Yeah. It is weird. It the, is there's weird. a real blending of of those sort of things when it comes to popular media now because they're trying to appeal to so many fucking de- demographics. You know, it's one thing to have like fart jokes or whatever, like Shrek and the revolution that yeah. followed in CGI films at that time yeah. or children's films that was like, oh, but subversively, you can kind of read in adult jokes. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. subversive anymore about it. They just kind of like throw shit. I guess it works because kids are now exposed to the internet from the age of like two. So I don't know. There's something weird going on there, and I don't know how to parse it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It, I, didn't, I wasn't a big fan. Um, if you love Guns and Roses, though, geez, it's like a fucking commercial for Guns and Roses too, <laughs> which I'm not a huge fan of the band. But there's like the, their music is all throughout it. People are wearing like Guns and Roses shirts. There's Guns and Roses posters on the wall and shit. Like it fuck? is drenched in Guns and Roses. God, they're really riding on fucking James Gunn's cock, aren't they? It is. <laughs> It's not my favorite. Um, so, uh, regardless, um, something cool that I was able to do this weekend, we took a, a trip to Savannah, Georgia, and we visited Ooh. a couple shops up there um, that are, like, horror-related. There's a record shop called Graveface in Savannah, um, and they they put out vinyl uh, records of, like, old horror movie scores and stuff. You can also buy them on cassette, mm. which people are like want to do now um <laughs> yeah they they have a, a shop right next door to grave face records that's called terror vision and it's sort of like they're it's like horror movie memorabilia as well as just like a uh, movie shop like you if you're local you can rent movies um they also have a bunch of stuff that they they have for sale you can you can buy uh dvds and blu-rays and stuff um they've got um Action figures, posters, autograph shit, just all kinds of memorabilia, masks. Um, and then they also, in the back room, have an arcade that it's like five bucks an hour to, to play as much as you want. Um, nice. And it's all horror related shit. They've, they had like some really great pinball machines. They had this really cool Halloween pinball machine, a Munsters pinball machine. Um, just like all kinds of shit. Uh, really recommend. I went looking out. for that Halloween machine, man, because really? that's done by one of my favorite artists. Like the, the, the artwork on there is done by Jason Edmiston. He's like 
fucking amazing artist who does a bunch of shit like mm. like pop culture shit a spell a lot of horror shit in particular um he did that uh that friday the 13th part six poster that i bought in our lydia street house bob nice that nice. i believe is in yours now yes you were mm-hmm. a true gentleman and gifted it to me yeah good <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> i wanted that That's what i was fishing for um <laughs> So yeah, I check. Uh, I recommend checking out Graveface and also Terror Vision. Um, there's we we weren't able to make it over to it, but they do have a Graveface museum as well. That I guess it it specializes in like oddities and like cult related stuff and like serial. Killer. It's got a death curse. Serial killer related stuff. They have like uh, John Wayne Gacy paintings and stuff. I, I feel kind of uh. weird about looking at stuff uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, that's uh, weird. I don't know. Like That passes a line in my brain. Yeah, I'm curious about it, but I also don't I don't know if I want to like immerse That's a little too close it. to glorifying Yeah. 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 I'm being interested in to me. It's got that weird vibe, but that, that is also in Savannah if you are interested, and apparently they're in the process of opening up another Graveface store in Chicago. So if you live in Chicago, um, keep an eye out for that. Um, really, really cool shit though. Um, I recommend checking both those shops out if you are in Savannah or Georgia or the surrounding area. Um, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Can, that's, that, yeah. Can I, um, yeah. squeeze in one more that I'd forgotten just, just yeah. as a, almost like a plug because I think it's so good. Joe Pera, uh, came to town last night. Joe Pera is a stand up comedian who is accurately described as, um, like the youngest world war two veteran you've ever met. He's <laughs> basically like an old man in a young man's body. Um, he has Joe Pera talks with you that show on adult swim that has recently been canceled. And I've brought that up many times. It's very good watch it on HBO max and also go see his standup. He's still doing some, t- some tour dates right now. Him and Dan Licata, I believe um, are going to be continuing on for a little bit longer. And it, we had a lot of fun watching this dude. So it was very, very silly, very stupid stuff. We sat behind a mother and her son who loves Joe Para. I was a young boy, like, like probably like 15 or something. And the mom was like, very unprepared for the opening act of Dan Licata, who is extremely blue humor to some extent talking about cum and shit. It was very <laughs> fun to watch that as well. That woman react to what her son brought her to see. Anyway, go see Joe pair. That's all I'm saying. Nice. Check it out. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead and get into our last segment of the show, which is of course our hotline screams. Hotline screams. If you are listening and would like to call in and leave a voicemail to be featured on next week's show, hit us up at 904-638-3231. We got a couple voicemails this week. First up, we're going to hear from a first-time caller, actually, um, who I believe used to live in South Korea, which is, he's got some interesting shit to say. Um, so yeah, let's, get, let's go ahead and let's get to it. Let's hear what he has to say. Soju is a fraud. He's full of shit. <laughs> Damn. Hello, Straight Chillin' Crew. Uh, this is Scott up in uh, the Great White North here, which isn't looking very white right now. Um, just calling uh, to let you guys know my uh, my thoughts about the last episode. Um, long-time listener, first-time caller. I'll just uh, leave a little anecdote to start here. Um, love the podcast, boys. Um Got a special place in my heart. Uh, I used to live in South Korea, so when I first uh, moved home to go to school, discovered your little podcast um, while I was smoking a bowl on my back porch going to school and uh, connected with you guys because uh, I heard you talking about um, South Korea sometimes. So, you be talking about, uh, you know, um, the fucking. Korean movie posters and shit, which they would give out at the theaters, which I used to collect and stuff. So it made me pretty much nostalgic, and uh, it was nice to hear. Um, and yeah, lo- love the podcast. So um, keep doing your good shit. Um, I would like to talk about um, kind of a response to last week's um one of your other college was saying uh that that godzilla 98 was like 
the top of the franchise for him. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that guy is smoking, but uh, you gotta you gotta get me some of that. <laughs> that. That movie is is pretty shitty. Um, but I would definitely agree that the beauty of that movie was inspiring others to check out um, Godzilla films that they missed for sure. Um, I could definitely see that happening. That film came out when I was quite young. I was born in '93, so. Um, I remember seeing it. There was a like, lots of advertising for it, lots of uh, hype around that movie. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely agree that in, in terms of inspiring other people to check out the movie, absolutely. Because I know that that happened for me um, when the Godzilla, the new American Godzilla movies came out, the 2014 film. So um, definitely inspired me to check out the old ones. Not a big kaiju film uh, fan. So yeah. Um, and also, big yes to inspiring Toho to make other Godzilla movies um, in their Millennium series. Uh, without Godzilla 98, we we might not have uh, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack. That is a fucking title, yeah. <laughs> um, and also a personal favorite of mine, Godzilla, Tokyo SOS, which are both great movies. So, um, without 98, we might not have that movie, despite Roderick and all his and we'll never know ah. what all his was. Swagger. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it was. So one so thing, he, so he called in, uh, oh, what was the name on that voice? Scott. Scott. Scott, thank you. So shouts out, Scott. Um, yeah, they still, I, I do have to give a little bad news. The theaters have been slacking lately on the posters. A lot of times they're not putting them out or they're not making as many for like as they used to. I still try to collect them as much. I got a uh, Mangs finally came out here. I'm in. Um, <laughs> thank and you. They ha- and, <laughs> yeah. and they had this little kind of poster. So I picked up some of those recently. They always crank them out for the Marvel movies and stuff like that. But on some some of the like small I haven't been putting them out like they used to. I used to be able to get all the horror movies with the, in the poster form, but it's harder these days. But also, um, he left a second voicemail, which we can't play because we have so many. But um, he commented on something that was very interesting. I want to give shouts outs because um, I found it very interesting. He was we were joking about old young Gary last week, which is the uh, the South Korean kaiju film, which the original came out, I think, in the 60s. And then they made another one in the 90s as well. But he was talking about a North Korean kaiju film. And so I was looking that up and it's called, uh, let me look it up in Korean. Old Rick? No. <laughs> uh, Puk- Pugasari, which is translates to starfish, which um, it does not look like starfish. Is it but a in, chocolate it, starfish? Maybe. Yeah, but yeah. one, one inch, it's got Too a crazy. Grind me! It's got a crazy story in that the director is a South Korean director who was kidnapped in Hong Kong and and kept in North Korea for like eight years and his last film that he was forced to create for Kim Jong-il was this kaiju film and that is crazy so now both Korean kaiju films old young Gary and uh, Pulgasari um, is uh, they are on YouTube and so it's like damn we should do like a North Korean Whoa. South Korean double feature <laughs> kaiju. <laughs> it's not a bad idea <laughs> so it's not. but I was like I need to find a Korean guest on that who knows about because even just that North Korean one is super interesting and would be a a crazy discussion so now I'm on the lookout maybe it's something we could pull off next year I'll try to get us a really good guest but thank you Scott because I was unaware of that and it sounds super interesting so thank you Kim Jong Un's available yeah we'll get him on hey what was daddy was real (laughs) daddy really wanted a kaiju film I don't know why he's country to me daddy really my dad did he really want me to watch kaiju and I didn't really get it but he put me on to it and I like it good call him in from Gainesville Florida we got 
<laughs> Kim Jong Un. <laughs> um, but yeah, they are on YouTube if you want to check them out. So I started a little bit. It looks like the one, the North Korea one's more kind of medieval set, unless that's just Korea and North Korea at the time in the seventies. But um, it, um, but no, they're like shooting cannons and shit. So I don't think so. But um, old Young Gary's on there too, and um, I need to check this shit out. This show's cracking me up. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for calling in. Drop yeah, some thank knowledge. You, Scott. you may have influenced us to create the greatest show we've ever made in our lives. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, wow. We'll see. Let's hype it up some more. Yeah. Let's just really <laughs> build it and build it and build it and never deliver. That's what we're here to do. Also, if you are uh, Korean and you have any kind go. of film knowledge, hit me up. Please, Please hit me up. <laughs> Please, now dear I gotta, God. I got to deliver a sweet gas for this episode. We need us a gap filler. (laughs) Please. Uh, I also love that Scott like found our show smoking a bowl on the back porch, just hanging out, chilling. I wonder how common that story is. Like I was just ripping a huge bong and uh, was listening to straight chilling for the first time. For Scott, for Scott, I think he's still on that porch based on the way he was <laughs> he never struggling to conjure porch. anything about South Korea he, for a second. He never left that porch. <laughs> um, if the first time you were listening to Straight Chilling was also when you were taking a huge bong rip, please call in. Let us know. We want, we want to hear from you. Also, if you're taking a huge shit, I'd be interested to hear about that as well. Call in, call in while you're shitting. Damn. Yeah. We're oh, going to yeah. get some calls. I've always been a creep. <laughs> and then you guys are going to bitch about it. I'm going to have to <laughs> regulate them. Oh, that's that's <laughs> definitely how it's going to go. Uh, thanks for calling, Scott. For real. We, we do appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, Scott. Uh, we got another voicemail. We're going to hear from our boy, Nate. Let's hear what he has to say. Hey, what up? Uh, Nate, I wanted to call and uh, answer a couple of the questions you guys had. Um, or prompts. Um, the a movie that I think could be made into a horror. Um, one of one of the options uh, stars our friend Ethan Hawke or Kevin Bacon. Um, back in the day, uh, called Whitewater Summer. Uh, it's also got a young Sean Astin in it. I think you could go a couple different ways with that. Um, in a in a horror genre, whether it's the kids' uh, survival horror or. Uh, the kids turn into a Lord of the Flies situation on Kevin Bacon, but uh, Kevin Bacon's kind of an asshole to him anyway. So, you know, sure where you want to go with that one. Um, I don't know why I thought of that movie, but for some reason that popped in my head. Um, and then going off Matt's uh, call from last week on fantasy movies, I think a good fantasy movie that could be turned into a horror is uh, Krull from the early 80s, um, starring my man Liam Neeson's. Liam Neeson's is my shit. Um, yeah, just a couple options there. Um, and then um, my favorite uh, movie featuring a kaiju. It's got to be Ghostbusters. Uh, Stay puffed as a as a kaiju. Um, come at me. See you guys. There you go. I'm trying to look up what that movie was that he mentioned. White yeah, Water I'm not Summer. familiar with that one. It's from 1987. I had to pull up the IMDb. Yeah, stars Kevin Bacon, Sean Askin, some other kids. It looks like he takes out a bunch of like kids on like a whitewater rafting adventure, and, and it goes kind of south. I never heard of that before. I was talking about the other one, the one. Oh, with sorry, in it. sorry. Oh, Kroll. Crawl, yeah, yeah. Kroll? like K R U L L. I believe so. Yeah, I think that's the uh, spell. Okay, yeah, I think I have seen that around, but I'm not familiar with it beyond that. So. I haven't seen that one either. Yeah, Liam Neeson, though, I'm always down. I'd, I'd like to see like an evil ass Liam Neeson character. Well, I guess he was Dark Man, wasn't he? So that that kind of he was. Yeah, who Dark Man? Dark Man. What is that? Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi film. Yeah. His, oh. Well, we, we should definitely talk about Dark Man. That'd be a good, well, good, good one. Add to it to the list. Sure is. Um, yeah, I don't know. White Whitewater Summer sounds interesting. Kroll, I, I got to check that out too, man. I haven't seen that. I, I also, I never think about the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man when it comes to kaiju, but I, I feel like that does yeah. qualify. <laughs> like it's a giant. I don't see why not. Creature. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, I think that that definitely qualifies. Um, yeah, good choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm down. I am down too. There's a Stay Puff Tiki mug I need to acquire 
and then maybe we. Oh can my God, Bob! Finally, is, talk about your addiction's stuff. really impacting the show at this point, Rob. <laughs> um, gonna... Pick oh. one. You can buy blues. You can buy tiki mugs. You can't. Oh. <laughs> you oh. cannot buy both. Thank you, Father, for my allowance. <laughs> <laughs> really, Justin just put in an law. injunction to get control of your bank accounts. You like can have Spears one did, addiction. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We can. <laughs> Thanks. You can, you can only afford crack. to feed one of your addictions. You can smoke meth, but you can't do both. Well, <laughs> I mean, not unless you want to see the face of God. I'm addicted to my boy, Young Gary. That's that's my one true addiction. Dude, I can't wait to talk about Young Gary now. <laughs> my boy, Young Gary. <laughs> He's my boy, Young, young Gary. Gary. <laughs> Go I game. love how it's like it's romanized out is Y O N G A R Y. <laughs> Young Gary. Young Gary, yeah. <laughs> that is that, that guy doing that review just straight up was like, Young Gary. He's not <laughs> he's doing that. It's like, he's doing his thing. killing me. <laughs> it's like young Sheldon. <laughs> oh, oh god. god. I hope not, dude. <laughs> He's a kaiju. <laughs> the worst kaiju movie I ever did see, Young Sheldon. <laughs> God damn. Uh, All right. Man. Thanks for calling in, Nate. Good good answers, honestly, all across the board. Mm-hmm. A couple movies yeah. that you need to check out for sure. Uh, Is it- that Nate from Jax? Yeah, it's my boy Nasty Nate. Yeah. Yeah, we met him. Yeah, for sure. He lives around the way. Oh. My boy. Well, I think we had a burger with that guy. Hell yeah. Shouts out. <laughs> Shouts out to my boy. Um. Yeah. yeah, if you guys are listening again, and you want to call in, leave a voicemail. Hit us up at nine zero four six three eight three two three one. If you if you if the first time you ever heard Straight Chillin was when you were taking a big fat bong rip, call in. I want to know. Do you guys have any other prompts you want to throw out there? Um, I'd love to know how many people are defenders of Blake Placid and mm. want to yell at us for our. <laughs> Fucking our scathing review. Yeah, where's this <laughs> mysterious positivity around this film coming from, and why? It can it be attributed to anything other than nostalgia glasses? That's even what yeah, even Bob's like trying to defend it came out as a middling you know, three stars. Yeah, I yeah. That's true. <laughs> it's, this movie does not blow my mind. It's not even close to like one of my favorite movies, but I dig it for what it is, and I'm sure that my enjoyment of it is not entirely about, but is affected by some nostalgia. Yeah. At least I think it might be a movie that would be benefited by like watching it together as opposed to (laughs) on my own. And yeah, bong Bong rips. rips. Definitely, definitely bong rips. Thick fog in that one. (laughs) (laughs) You gotta fog out the house and then put on like plastic. Oh yeah. That's the real fog hog. There you go. boy. Young Gary. My boy. I'm still looking at this kaiju stuff. My boy, Young Sheldon. (laughs) <laughs> nobody's God. boy uh yeah call in 904-638-3231 next week we'll be back with a brand new show as always we're gonna be talking about the latest and hopefully greatest from our boy oh. our actual boy jordan peele the movie is called nope check it out slam it in your nope. eyeballs movie's called nah it's not it's not the movie titled mope so don't watch that movie if it ain't <laughs> raw dog no. Oh my uh, god. Uh, the, no, we are uh, no, these are just no. sounds at this point. <laughs> there is nothing intelligible about what's happening right now. If it ain't dope dog, nope dog. You got a little okay. nope. <laughs> got a little nope dog on your lip there, Bob. <laughs> oh my god. Let's <laughs> That's the end of this show. Uh, Check out Nope. Get ready for next week's episode. Until then, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at str8 underscore chilling on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. Send us an email at straight chilling podcast at gmail.com. If you want to join our daily Slack channel conversations, hit us up on one of those social media outlets and I'll send you a link so you can do so. And until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling. Oh, yes. I killed him!